The U.S. economy, the world's most competitive for the first time in a decade. This is according to an index produced by the World Economic Forum. President Trump taking note of his economic accomplishments in an interview yesterday with Fox Business's Trish Regan. I really think the economy is going to bring people together because people are doing better now. African American unemployment, the best ever. Mm -hmm. Asian American, Hispanic American, women, everything, every category. I mean, whether you look at median income, whether you look at employment or unemployment, no matter what chart you're looking at, it's either ever or 50 or 60 years the best, the best numbers. It's probably the best economy we've ever had. Joining us right now is Harvard economics professor, former Reagan economic advisor, Marty Feldstein. Uh, good to see you, Marty. Thanks very much for joining us. Good to be with you. How do you assess things right now? Oh, the U.S. economy is in great shape. Uh, every measure that you look at, unemployment, uh, wage growth, even the official statistics understate how, how much progress we're making on wages because they don't take into account the fact that older workers who are retiring have higher incomes than the young folks who are coming in. But what worries me is not what's happening now, but what will happen as long-term interest rates rise. So you do worry that rates are going to cut into some of this growth at some point? They'll cut into the growth and they'll cut into the market. Yeah, I think, one, I think it's important to note that one of the reasons why we're back at the top of this list in a decade is because of fiscal policies brought on by this administration where they deregulated and they did tax cuts because we had the most uh, obstructive tax, corporate tax policy in the world. We had one of the highest rates. And this, this study stated that America America's vibrant entrepreneurial culture and its dominance in producing a competitive labor market and nimble financial system are primarily the factors. So don't we need a monetary policy that can react to that, that can serve as a referee where they do raise rates, where inflation's going up, the, the short-term rates are actually still lower than the rate of inflation, Absolutely. so it's still a conducive, uh, uh, you know, policy. So the Fed should have started raising rates, as I've said to Maria on this program, three years ago. And so they're way behind the curve. Uh, the federal funds, the overnight rate that the Fed uh, moves uh, is less than the inflation rate. So that's no. So that was Janet Yellen then. Janet Yellen should have raised rates. Sooner. Should have done it sooner, right? It, so we've run a decade of of negative real rates, and that's put us in a bad position. The problem is not so much inflation, as it is that when the economy turns down, the Fed has no ammunition. They can't. And so that's why they have to gradually push up the rate. Well, they, we've seen what they can do in terms of blowing out their balance sheet. Taking it from less than a trillion to what four and a half trillion at the very yeah. high. I, I want to ask you about the ten-year yield, though, because yes. again, does that represent right now where it is optimism in the economy? At what point does the the yield on the ten-year become a real problem? Not it becomes a real problem when it gets to four plus or five, okay. and I think that'll happen. Right now, it's a little over three. It's doubled, doubled in the last two years. So, and it's moving up, and it'll move up more with inflation. It'll move up more when the market has to absorb a trillion dollars a year of uh, government deficits. And it moves up because the Fed is uh, on this path to gradually raise the short rate. So all of that is going to push up the long rate. But four percent. Marty, the, 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 Thomas Honig, the former Kansas City Fed uh, chief, uh, yep. said the same thing about interest rates. When they're artificially low, you don't have ammunition uh, that you can right. launch. If, if you have a systemic problem like oil prices go higher and inflation does, how long can we mitigate the rising rates as far as the economy with these tax cuts? When you guys cut taxes in 87, the GDP goes from 3.5 to 4.2. Bush tax cuts went from 1% to 3.8. We're seeing the same type rise right now. How long can that be mitigated? Uh, That's good. By question. the Fed or, or no, by no, I'm sorry. in general? I'm sorry, in general, in the economy, because right now the rising interest rates are not affecting the economy as much because these tax cuts That's have more right. than mitigated That's the effect. That's right. So I think. When, the, when does that equilibrium hit? Well, I don't know what day, but it's going to hit. So we're going to run out of the extra steam that comes from uh, cutting rates. We're going to continue to have the advantage of better regulations. Uh, we'll continue to have the advantage of lower corporate rates, but the uh, extra boost that you get from cutting the corporate rate and cutting personal rates, putting a trillion dollars a year into the economy, that's not going to continue to generate stronger growth. 